Hi everyone, welcome to Quora with JC. Today is episode two. I'm going to continue what I did last week. I just want to mention here that I said a lot of things last week already, and I don't want to repeat myself too often. So uh, we talked about, you know, things like masks, etc. I don't want to repeat myself. So please check out episode one, because probably I already answered some of this stuff. Today, we have more questions, mostly about the coronavirus. So let's get going. The first question is right in the feels, man, right in the feels. Is the coronavirus pandemic affecting our mental health? Uh, yes. Uh, of course, I'm not sure if th there is any research out yet uh, because some research is kind of long-term research. You have to wait a few years to accumulate data and we just don't have that at the moment. But in the short term, yes, for sure. Well, like in my case, I'm already pretty isolated anyway. Uh, for whatever reasons, I mean, look, there are many reasons why. Uh, one reason is, you know, I'm just not a kind of party guy or the life of the party, etc. That's just not my personality. Uh, secondly, I do kind of eliminate a lot of people just because I just don't find them interesting to begin with. So why would I waste my time talking about the weather when I could be doing something much more productive? So there's a bunch of combinations there, uh, situations. But obviously it doesn't help when you are in a lockdown and maybe you want to go out and socialize, but you can't for, again, whatever reason. Maybe in some countries the police will stop you and fine you if you're just, you know, going around doing stuff like without a good reason like you you must have a valid reason to be outside and usually the valid reason is you can go to the supermarket or you can go to the hospital and maybe well obviously travel to work although that you know it depends how you do that so yeah a lot of conditions i would say and i just can't go out right now because you don't. You just don't know where the virus is. It could be on the bus. Uh, it could be on the train. It could be like a, a very specific corner of the train uh, where you know the virus is on a surface there, and if you touch it, then it will, you know, spread to you. Uh, because the virus by itself cannot spread. That's the thing. If it's just on the floor somewhere, it doesn't have any living tissue to spread in. So. But if you, st if you start having people touching it and putting it into their mouths, into their ear, uh, eyes, etc., then yes, absolutely. And the other thing, of course, is for old people, uh, the reply I have here is actually from an old person. And he says, I I have, I'm 72 years old. I live alone. I have no family. Uh, you know, I've been wearing a mask and uh, staying at home except for trips to the grocery store, the pharmacy and doctor appointments, which is pretty much what I just said. Uh, yeah, if you're old and you you can't, in certain cases, even have relatives visiting you, that's really, really tough. And I think that's an aspect of the virus that maybe we don't talk enough about. But this whole mental health thing, it's it's huge, huge, definitely. I, I wish I could spend more time on it, but I have to move on. But I would say, yeah, it's the impact is absolutely huge, yes. Why is COVID-19 still getting worse despite many tens of millions of people already either over the illness or got vaccinated? I'm not sure when that question was posted, but it seems a bit out of date in a way. So first of all, the fact that you got over coronavirus, it doesn't mean shit. That's what I said in the last episode that the whole herd immunity thing is extremely questionable. Now, usually, yes, usually if you have, let's say, um, like chicken pox and you, you know, you have it, you get over it and then you don't have it again because your body like memorized it. And if it's just not going to happen again, uh, we don't see that with coronavirus. There are people, I mean, okay. I had it last year. I suspect I had it because I didn't have tests. Well, because if you want to go have a test, you have to go to the hospital. 
you have to wait in line with a bunch of infected people there. And if you don't have the virus, you might get it while waiting in the waiting room with other people who have it. That's the thing. So, I didn't have the test, but I suspect I had the coronavirus twice last year. Uh, one, I think, was after the supermarket, and the other case might have been after the dentist. Well, uh, because in both situations, you people go directly into your teeth, man. I mean, I don't know how well they clean those tools before using them, right? So, the the reason why I know it, because those there, are, there were two days or so where I basically lost the sense of smell. And that's what people say. Like, if you get the COVID, then uh, you lose the smell, uh, sometimes lose taste, etc. So, yeah. So, I already had it twice, which means that I didn't get the herd immunity that they were so proudly talking about. I didn't get it. I got the virus again in just the same form. So yeah, uh, look, just be careful with like the narrative here. People say a lot of things, but uh, you don't get over it. That's the thing. Uh, vaccinations, well, we have to wait and see. I think when that post, because that post is quite old, it's, it's like from, uh, okay, it is pretty old. But there are people who, yes, there are vaccinations. I think the UK is over 50% vaccinated. Israel is close to 100% vaccinated. So we should start seeing drops in, you know, rate of uh, infection, etc. And the number of cases, etc. But, but it depends on the people. Because if people just say, oh, we're just going to vaccinate. That's all. Without wearing the mask. Without washing the hands, then the effect of vaccination will still be there, but it will not be as effective if we like t take all the measures. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, next question. How do different countries define what a case of coronavirus is? Why do we say case instead of infection? Um, okay, it's, it's kind of easy to explain. So case is just how many tests were made. So for example, let's say you got a million cases. So what it means is that from that million, probably as is usually the case, over probably over 50% is gonna be negative, uh, but you're gonna get, yeah, probably 20, 30% of positive cases. That's more or less what we see. So yeah, case is just the total. It, it can be positive. It's positive and negative together. So we, we don't know yet, but, uh, but, the in rate of, but the infection is the positive cases. Basically, that's it. That's, that's the whole difference here. All right, next question. If the COVID-19 vaccine does not work, what do we do next? Well, first of all, there are many vaccines already. Uh, is they just vary in uh, the percentage of like efficiency. Uh, so yeah, like it depends which one you're talking about. And if they don't work, if none of them work, but that's not true already. That's a hypothetical, which is not even true. Uh, if they did not work, well, then it's back to the drawing board and we need to find new formulas to counter the virus. That's pretty much it. This is a simple answer as it gets. This is uh, one of the questionable uh, questions. How will the COVID-19 pandemic impact the airport duty-free liquor market in 2020? Wow, this is an extremely specific question. I mean, like you're talking about a very specific area in, in a, even in the airport. Uh, well, of course, negatively, of course, because you have less travelers, so you, you're going to get less people buying stuff at the airport. But I mean, it's such an odd question, though. Like, um, yeah. Why does China always seem to downplay what happens in their country? Well, there are many reasons for that. One reason is that basically in China, you got one party, one political party, the Communist Party. Well, they call themselves communist, but really they're kind of social uh, more social than than communist. 
uh, I think communism is kind of the end goal of socialism, but like socialism is the way to get there. So I think they're there. They're not at communism yet. Uh, definitely not. So yeah, well, if you got one party, they have to protect their image. So they're going to do everything they can to lie, to deflect, uh, neglect, etc. Uh, in China, China has a lot of problems. Okay, China has like the Uyghur problem. Uh, they had the massacre of Tiananmen Square, etc. This is not something new. Uh, they've been doing that for decades. So they, they've been doing that to their people, to their own Chinese people for decades. And of course, if it's... Uh, look, I mean, that's kind of the classic thing. I mean, first of all, a lot of countries where, when a huge disaster happens, like for example, when Chernobyl happened, the Soviet authorities at the time also didn't admit it immediately. It took them a while to admit it. They, well, okay, first, okay, you don't understand what's happening, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But once you do understand what happened, because the next day you could go there and you could see that, okay, yeah, the roof of the whole thing is like just exploded. And then you see the, the lid that was holding uh, uh, on the reactor core that thing is like up in the air and flipped upside down. Uh, you could probably deduce that something is happening. Something is wrong, very wrong there. Uh, but again, they didn't do that. They, they kept pushing kind of propaganda. They kept saying that everything is okay, etc., etc. So yeah, a lot of countries do that. Um, if something happened in the States, I am not confident that, you know, the US government is so transparent that they would immediately convey the information to the people. It could happen, I don't know, but I don't, I don't think so. Uh, we saw that, for example, with the AIDS epidemic and with the coronavirus epidemic, actually. It was absolutely downplayed at the beginning. They said, it's a hoax, it doesn't happen, it's, a, it's a, just a few people. So yeah, look, every country does it at the end of the day, but it's true that China does it more than others. Yes, I think so. I, I, that's just my opinion though. Why are the Japanese so precise and meticulous about everything? Don't they get tired of it or rebel and do their own thing? Well, actually that is not true because of course not all Japanese people are so precise and meticulous etc etc there are people here who are like absolute garbage people man just trash and uh you know they also pollute a lot they these are the type of people who just throw plastic wraps outside just outside the convenience shops etc uh, so yes there are people like that here of course not every japanese is perfect far from it uh as far as being like precise and meticulous don't they get tired of it I think they do get tired of it. I think it does take a lot of energy to always keep bowing and keep remembering this speaking in a very kind of polite way. It requires energy, actually. It's not like we, in the West, we just kind of say more or less whatever we want. Um, here you have to always uh, obey these kind of rules of politeness, etc. So, and I, I do suppose that, yes, it does make people tired, like mentally, at least. Um, but no, not every, not every Japanese person is perfect, though. That, that is a myth. That is an absolute myth. Uh, in general, they have a lot of good in Japan, yes, but I don't agree with everything. I, definitely, there are people I don't agree with. So, so yeah, there's that. Why are the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean people so thin? So actually, right now, there is a, 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 sort, a certain growth of fat people, okay? So fat, there are more and more fat people. But obviously, the rate of that is not really high compared to, say, somewhere in, like, Mexico. Mexico, I think, was recently voted as the, the fattest country in the world, which I don't know. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, definitely in America, we have a lot of issues with fat people. And uh, yeah, look, it can be a disease, uh, but it's also because basically the, the cheap price 
of fast food. It's, uh, it's kind of akin to the cheap price of fuel. Uh, because fuel is so cheap, then people keep buying more and more of it instead of looking maybe a little bit more expensive towards an electric vehicle. But actually, you, 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 you save a lot of money on electric vehicles. That's the truth. You'll actually save a lot of money on, on not buying fuel in the long run. So with the fast food market, it's the same thing. You can get uh, the whole meal, like a hamburger and French fries and uh, a drink, all of that for like under three bucks which is like, wow, amazing. I'm going to get that every day, right? Uh, they have like breakfast options, like lunch options, etc. But it is not healthy at the end of the day. That's, that's the bottom line. So yes, it is very cheap, but it's also not very healthy at all, actually, at all. Like things like McDonald's is like the worst stuff you can put into your body, really. But in a way, it tastes good. In, in a way, in a way. So some people like it. So you can compare that to, for example, uh, buying, going to a supermarket, and then you have to buy like vegetables and basically to prepare your meal. There, there are, there's a chance there that whatever you cook in the end is going to be much more expensive than just going to a McDonald's, say. And, and that's the trap. And uh, so that's the trap. And a lot. So in America, for example, there is there was a scary statistic. And this was before the pandemic began. So already before the pandemic began, uh, 75 to 80 percent of people, workers in America were working paycheck to paycheck. Do you really think that a person working paycheck to paycheck is going to be able to afford some kind of nice meals at home? Of course not. So what? So then what's the alternative? The alternative is to dip into the fast food market, which is very cheap. You can get the whole meal for like three bucks or less. And that's it. You move on. Uh, we don't see that in Asia at all. And of course, the Asian diet is completely different. Uh, so yeah, but it's, it's also genetics. Okay, let's not forget that. It's also genetics. So... You kind of combine all of that together and then you see why certain people are more prone to, to getting fatter than others. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I, I hope it's a fair resume of a situation. I'm just giving my opinions here, so I'm not claiming to be right. Uh, I hope I'm right. I hope I'm giving the right reasons. And uh, if I were to answer these posts, that's the answers I would give. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week for the next episode. Bye-bye.